The greatest and most sublime art of painting in India flowered at Ajanta and spread from there to all parts of India. From the 2nd century BC to the 6th century AD, the walls of the caves of Ajanta were painted by guilds of painters. The themes were Buddhist, the patrons were Hindu kings, and the painters belonged to guilds whose dharma or duty in life was to paint. Whether it was Buddhist caves, Hindu temples or palaces. There is no such thing in my belief as Hindu art or Buddhist art or Jaina art or even for example Muslim art. What we have really is a common Indian artistic tradition which overarches the country and people from any of the religious groups, whether they are Buddhist or Jains or Hindus, employ painters and artists and architects in order to execute their works and they do it. The art and techniques of painting were carefully studied and put down in the Chitra Sutra of the Vishnu Dharmotra, which is the oldest known treatise on painting in the world. How to depict different themes effectively, the proportion of human figures, the use of colors to help in the communication of ideas, the fine details of movements and stances of the human body in different situations and in different moods and so many other ideas and details to instruct the painter. These were carefully formulated to be passed on over the centuries and through guilds of painters from father to son. The purpose of this documentation was to preserve the legacy of the collective understanding of the finest minds. There are many remnants of ancient paintings found in all corners of the Indian subcontinent, belonging to practically every century of the last 1500 years and more. These display the fact of a great and unified tradition of painting in ancient India. There are fragments of the art of the time of Ajanta which survive at sites like Pital Khora in Maharashtra. In these we see the fine fusion of the heart and mind and the unbroken tradition of noble themes painted by hands of individual inspiration. In the meantime, in the 7th century, the Pallava kings of Tamil Nadu gave exuberant and glorious expression to themes of Lord Shiv in the temple of Pannamalai and Kailashnath in Kanchipuram. The walls of the Pradakshina Path or the outer ambulatory of the Kailashnath temple were once covered with paintings of brilliant colors. Traces of these are still discernible. The Pallavas were very fond of the theme of Shiv's family. Shiv is regal and yet a fond family man with his beautiful wife and child. In the heart of the temple of Brahdishwar, protected by massive walls of stone, are perhaps the greatest paintings of the theme of Lord Shiv ever painted. Towards the end of the 10th century, King Raja Raja Chola expressed his devotion and also his power and grandeur 
by commissioning murals on a spectacular scale. These were made across the walls of the dark inner ambulatory corridor of the Brahdishwar temple. If expression is to be taken as the criterion by which a great painter has to be judged, it is here in abundance in these Chola paintings. In these paintings we see the Navras, or the nine emotions depicted with rare sensitivity. The sentiment of heroism, Viraras, is clearly seen in Tripurantak's face and form. The vigorous attitude of the demons determined to fight Lord Shiv and the wailing tear-stained faces of their women clinging to them in despair suggest Raudra and an emotion of pity, Karuna. <laughs> The colors in the paintings are soft and subdued, the lines firm and sinuous, and the expressions are true to life. More than ever before, we see the artist's lavish use of embellishments of crowns and jewelry, portraying the royal splendor of the times. The painter in ancient India seems to have had such a deep mastery over his technical skills that his work appears effortless. There is a natural quality and grace in his work which communicates instantly what he wishes to depict. We see a perfect understanding of anatomy. The outline is strong and very sure and there is an easy a natural depiction of volume. Most of all, there are the touches, the details which bring the painting alive, which communicate a sense of the life in the painting.